Hey guys, welcome to my review-ish look at Gears of War 4. I call it review-ish because there is no numeric score when I do reviews. If you want to call it a review, that's fine. I call it review-ish for that reason. In short, what are my impressions of Gears of War 4? My impressions are gameplay sells it. Gears has never been a franchise you play for the story. The story is kill this monster, turn on that generator, kill that other monster over there, cry a little, lather, rinse, repeat. That being said, the story so far beginning is artfully done, using, of course, Tom Bissell's favorite device, the flashback. However, unlike in the thoroughly terrible Gears of War Judgment, Bissell doesn't overuse the flashbacks. He still doesn't have the handle on writing gears that Karen Travis or Josh Ortega had, but he's much improved here from his first attempt. The story as it is, is that the war has been over for blah 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 something years and the COG is rebuilding with the help of DB robots and a somewhat heavy-handed propagandistic government. JD Phoenix, son of Marcus and Anya from the first games, and his childhood friend, orphan Delmont Del Walker, went AWOL from the COG and joined the Outsiders, befriending Kate Diaz, the daughter of Reina Diaz, a strong female leader of a group that's kind of like the Stranded, only less dirty and with better hair and jewelry. It's a concept that resets the board without changing too many gameplay fundamentals, and I'm just fine with that. Regarding the three new main characters, JD, Del, and Kate, Two of the three ain't bad. What's bad is that Kate is hands down the weakest character. Like so many female game characters, she suffers from being defined in juxtaposition to other characters within the game and lacks a defined personality of her own. My fears in the demo were realized in that she's too much of a princess for the rough and tumble world of Gears of War. And once again, Laura Bailey is in the awkward position of providing lily white voice work to a character of color. Yes, Kate is young. But she grew up scavenging cog bases, and so I'd expect more grit than she has based on the kids I knew who had to grow up fast. And she's old enough to have a pretty awesome rack. Emphasis on awesome. Woohoo! Boobs in a game! Yay! So I'm not going to be too rough on her. I think the worst part of the way Kate is introduced in this game is that she's badly overshadowed by her own mother, who's a phenomenal character that doesn't get used enough. Reina Diaz is a bona fide badass, and I'm gonna deal with these elements of the game in a separate piece. Right now, I wanna stick to the review instead of going into the weeds. Yay for keeping things on topic. Another strange thing is that JD too often sounds a lot like Nathan Drake, and it was oddly distracting. Del was probably my favorite new character, even though he has the least notable arc of the three. Del's an example of a character who makes his limited lines count. The actor Eugene Bird seems to inhabit the character in an original way that the other two actors don't quite manage. He seems to understand the pacing of the back and forth needed to make numerous run-on jokes work. Were it not for his clear command of the material, I think some of the ongoing comments about irony and declaring areas clear would have seemed smug, but he makes them shine in a way the other two don't manage. Again, I blame voice direction for this as opposed to just the acting. There are times that some of the voice acting sounds much more like actors reading lines as opposed to conversations that flow properly, and there's too much experience in this game for that to be the actor's fault. The don't look down sequence is particularly cringeworthy in this way because the actors aren't vocally in the same scene. Kate is doing peril, Dell is doing comedy, and it results in a big miss. Overall, the swings from attempted drama and joking around feel dissonant in places in Gears 4. I get coping, but when the clock is ticking on rescuing lost loved ones, some of the dialogue feels false. And yeah, they went back to the well with that motivation too, and I probably could have done without that, especially since they do it three times in one game. But Gears of War 4 isn't a movie, and admittedly if it was, it would be a halfway terrible one. Gears of War 4 is a video game. You play Gears to play Gears, and as a game, it's a ton of fun. Gameplay is familiar with enough new bells and whistles to make it feel fresh. The yank mechanics over cover add new dynamics, as do a few interesting new weapons like the overkill shotgun that fires once when you press the trigger and another when you release it. There's also a new sniper rifle that only allows you a limited charge before it overheats. The new weapons require tactics and precision, so while they're powerful, they don't upset the game balance too badly. The play still revolves around the Lancer and the Nasher shotgun as your base weapons. 
There are also some environment-based attacks that can be pretty fun to use, and Horde Mode is incorporated into campaign gameplay so new players can learn what it is before playing it as a standalone multiplayer. Which I won't be reviewing here, because there was a warning in the embargo that the servers might be underpopulated. There's no point in reviewing an experience that isn't the actual experience. The exploding pod covers are a fun addition too. You need to use them in places, but if they take too many hits, they explode and a juvie enemy, similar to the wretches in previous games, pop out of it. Win mechanics add a different challenge to other levels, as well as showing off how the latest Unreal Engine handles wind. And there's a bike level, a cable ride, and other gameplay variations that mix things up without overstaying their welcome. With one notable exception. The mech levels. Great idea! Love the idea! It was fun for a while, but after playing Titanfall, they're gonna feel slow and frustratingly difficult to control. Like past Gears games, Gears of War 4 ends abruptly, so be prepared for that. And the last boss fight is likely the worst in the whole game. Before that, however, there are some amazing fights. The locust of previous games have been replaced by hostile robots and a new enemy called the Swarm, which presents itself as a combination of locust-like hominids, as well as more bestial enemies that I can only describe as looking like insectoid vaginas. Some of them are even called Snatchers. The first Snatcher fight is exceptionally annoying due to an AI glitch that means your teammates sometimes don't rescue you when you're captured and hauled away in one of those insect vaginas. That doesn't seem to happen in future fights, so it's just the first one that has this problem, and since the game doesn't tell you, you free trap teammates by shooting the Snatcher's glowing labia. Because of course you do it that way! The Swarmac fights, which replace the Brumac fights, on the other hand, are totally fun even though they're lengthy. It's an old school, shoot the glowing parts boss fight again, but it goes on forever in the best of ways. It's easier to handle if you play campaign co-op, and in my opinion, the ideal way to play Gears of War 4 is co-op campaign on hardcore difficulty. If you've played a Gears game before, normal mode will feel too easy. The AI on hardcore feels more like the experience of multiplayer with executions and charges for close combat. I'm still terrible at that close combat, which is an element of multiplayer mode that we finally get to use in the campaign to get better at it. Sniping, on the other hand, is very satisfying thanks to a really awesome headshot animation that is bloody gross and oh so satisfying. So while Gears of War may not bring the outright fast-paced slaughter of Doom to the table, I very much enjoyed the tactics required to play. An understanding of weapons and cover is important, and you do have to practice with the new guns. The load times are fast, and there are some very clever cover-ups of background loading, which I appreciated very, very much from a design standpoint. Overall, Gears of War 4 is the most polished Xbox One exclusive to date. It feels finished and doesn't suffer from popular features from previous games being ripped out to appease 60 frames per second. It still has a living room co-op experience, it still has online co-op and multiplayer that I hope works. And it still has a five-act campaign with plenty of gameplay if you don't want to get slaughtered by much better players online. It's a total package that delivers, despite some narrative and character issues that can be easily worked out for the next game. So I highly recommend Gears of War 4. If you like third-person shooters, I had an absolute blast. And if you're a Gears fan, it's a no-brainer, guys. It's Gears, and it really does remain Gears.